All right, so this video, uh, Rory, Robert, and the right arm, um, I think it's important because I think the right arm and where it's positioned during the golf swing, particularly where it moves in the downswing, uh, is, a, is a hot topic. I think it's an important topic because I think the, the golf machine, um, for many people who've had a chance to read that and uh, spend some time with it, um, yeah, there's two big schools on the golf machine. You have folks that are sort of chapter and verse, they're very much taken in a literal sense. And you have people that are somewhat more like me, who've read it, find see some value in it, and I think as a primary motivation, use it as uh, sort of an inspiration to understanding how you can classify the golf swing. And so um, two of the terms they utilize it within the golf machine has to do with the right arm and where it is in the position late in the downswing. And they use something called pitch, and they use something called punch. And the, you know, sort of the basic definition is that if your right elbow is in a pitch position, your right elbow is pointing at your right hip. And if you had your forearm sort of this, in this direction, uh, at this point where it's parallel to the ground, or when it's perpendicular to the ground, the right elbow is pointing right here. Now, in a punch position, the right elbow is more tucked back this way. You can see my right elbow right here. If I were in a punch position, you wouldn't be able to see my elbow. It would be tucked in this way. That's the reason uh, for the title of the video, if you have Rory and, and Robert Garrigus, two very different golf swings. But I think one thing that you'll notice specifically is how the right arm works in the downswing. And so uh, if you've got somebody out there who has a tendency to get the right arm stuck behind them, and this is what Rory McElroy does, um, and there's a lot of discussion about uh, how great his golf swing is. And, and while I, I think it's extremely aesthetically pleasing, I think it does have some things that it can improve upon. And, I think one of the things that he does is that from his top of backswing position, he lets the right arm, right arm run off a little bit. So does Robert Gerges uh, to a similar extent. He probably runs it off a little more. But what Rory does is that for when he gets the, this top of backswing position with the right arm sort of run off from the side a little bit, what he does, if you watch his swing in slow motion, is that he'll flex both knees. Uh, if, you, if you drew a line on his knee flex at the start of his swing, what he'll do is, is as he gets to the top, he'll flex both knees sort of underneath him and towards the golf ball. And what that does is that that drives the right arm straight down. And the right arm doesn't get out this way and out down in front of him. Um, the difference between somebody like Rory and maybe somebody like Tiger Woods, who does a similar movement where he has sort of this, this really specific flexing and squatting action, Tiger's is more straight down. Rory's is a little more knees out to the ball, so to speak. But the, the difference there is that what Tiger does is Tiger continues to restrict his shoulder turn as he flexes downward. He keeps his shoulders turned. And so the difference between him and Rory McIlroy is that what Rory's learned to do is that while the right arm has run off a little bit and he does this flexing action, the right arm will come down. But what Rory McIlroy does is he opens the upper body and so by the time the club shaft gets down here to P6, while the right arm is probably still t is tucked a little bit behind, he's now in a position where he's opening much more through the shot, and his right arm is more in, in sort of this position, whereas what Tiger Woods has done historically, and I think he's improved on it, uh, if you look at some of the swings from the Masters, is that he was getting into a position uh, similar to Rory's, and he's very sort of low and, and, and across his body, and he would have this pronounced squat down. But what he would do is he would restrict the shoulder turn and the right arm, the arms would actually fall more in front of him, so he'd get more into this pitch position, as opposed to that he had the similar movement with the arms because the shoulders didn't turn, the club head was not getting out to the ball. And I think because Tiger has such an aversion to the ball going left, that he's, you know, he sort of learned how to make the ball not go to the left, and so he kept his shoulders for also for power as, as a young person. That you have this move where you have this squat, this is pushing down into the ground, and if the shoulders don't open. The arms are going to fall more in front of you as opposed to falling straight behind you. And what Rory's done and why he's just a better driver of the golf ball than Tiger is historically, especially the last four or five years, is that Rory's been able to learn that as the right arm is falling behind you, the upper body's got to really pick up the pace to get the club head out to the ball. And that if he didn't unwind the shoulders and the arms got back in here, he'd, hit very, he'd have to really use the arms at the last minute and kind of really weakly hit it with his arms. But he's learned that, it, that this sort of pressing to the ground move is a very powerful move, but what he hasn't been able to do is get the arms to work out. He's only had them work down. And in that position, you've really got to get the upper body to turn through hard. Now, 
Robert Garrigus is a completely different situation in that he plays from a couple of unique positions. He gets the left wrist a little low to the top. He lets the right arm run off quite a bit. But at the start of his downswing, he also has a bit of a compression movement in the ground, not quite, not so much with the knees pushing at the ball. He sort of just sort of squats his butt back and behind him. The knee flex doesn't increase to that great extent. But what we'll notice with him, specifically at, uh, at P5, where the left arm parallel to the ground, in the downswing, if you measure Rory McIlroy and Robert Garrigus, Rory McIlroy's arm at P5 is 25, 30 degrees inside his toe line. Robert Garrigus' left arm is actually, it may almost be just outside his toe line. But what that does is, you know, sort of just categorizing A and B, and there's many uh, different moles in the spectrum, is that the further the left arm moves out, the more likely you are to have the arm in a pitch position. The more the left arm stays in, the harder it is to get that right arm out in front. Really, the only way to do it if, is if you're somebody like Tiger Woods, who's just hyper flexible, hyper mobile, and that he's able to rotate the hips and have the arms come down to this point. Most people can't sustain that shoulder turn, and so the shoulders will start to move open and the right arm will get stuck behind it. Tiger's so incredibly flexible that he can keep 90 degrees of shoulder turn, have the hips pressed down and open, and he keeps those shoulders so square for so long, the arms actually do come down in front. But what that does is that sends the plane line way out into right field. So if you're working on getting the right arm from punch, to pitch. One of the key things I focus on, as always, make sure the backswing pieces are, are appropriate and that you're getting to a position where shoulders are 90 degrees, you've established a nice position here, but if you're doing some sort of transitional move that is not allowing the left arm to move itself out to the ball, and at P5 your hands are way inside the toe line, it's really difficult to get yourself into a punch position from there. So in, in, in that position, what I really focus on is keeping that left shoulder low, working the left arm out, getting the, the more the left arm comes out, the more the right arm will, will learn to behave in sort of a pitch motion. The more you get over and out, or the feeling is you're getting over and low, the right arm is more likely to do this as opposed to get stuck behind you this way and then have to make one of these kind of moves through the ball. And, and the risk you run with that, and what Rory McIlroy has seen in his career, is that under pressure, when the right arm is pinned behind you, your body has got to keep moving aggressively, or else you'll lose that right wrist bend and hit a lot of quick hooks. And so what Rory's timing was great this past week, obviously congressional, but if you look at the Masters as, he, as he's you know, struggling, losing his lead, just trying to get the ball in the fairway, you start to lose some of that rotational speed if you're really just hanging on too tight to try to keep one in the fairway. And so if you're making this move where the arms are dropping down and you're rotating real aggressively, if the body stops for a second, the arms are going to take over. Whereas if you're in a more of a pitch position where the left arm works out and the right arm is working under in this position, you're more likely to hit the ball without as much face rotation as if somebody gets their arm stuck behind them. So, Rory, more classic punch. Robert's more classic pitch. His biggest differences are going to be at P5. Where is that left arm? If you're measuring it on the toe stance line. So if your left arm's way in here, chances are you can be playing from a punch position and probably hitting a lot of drop kick hooks and you're probably hard getting the ball up in the air and sometimes hard with contact. And if you're trying to get it more this way, left shoulder down, the hips have to open early, shoulders have to open, everything's got to sort of move in this direction, and then you get to teach that right arm to behave as it comes down. You don't want to do, you don't want to be working this way and working the left arm out. You got to use the right arm to behave uh, to learn how to get that arm in, in the proper position. You can play from any of them, but making sure your pieces match up is, is the most important thing because I think Rory's taught, I'm sure, a lot of young players that it's possible to play with the arm trapped behind you and the left arm way in. That's possible, absolutely, because you have to have a lot of upper body rotation to keep that right wrist from losing its position. So that's Rory and Robert in the right arm.